Jay Ward, Jay Ward Podcast. Now I'm here. <laughs> well then, let's talk about it. Elix the MC. Yes, sir. What's up, man? How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a minute since we did this. 2021. I, I don't know if it's been that long. I swear, I, I think I think that you was think the last it was that one. long. Really? I think it was that long. Wow. If not 2019, it was a it was a minute ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, life doesn't stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what's good? What's good with you, man? What's what's going on? Um, same old. Just going through the transitions of life. Just dealing with certain things, family things, personal things, and just dropped the album about a month ago. What's it called? Easy struggles. Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> I know. big the big album. <laughs> Um, I put a lot of thought into that, man. I feel like that was probably the best piece of work I ever did. Work. Ever. Okay. But you know how my brain works. Mm. I can't stay on one thing for too long. So we're already on chapter two. And nice. I'm not going nice. to speak on what the album is really called. Me and you know, but right. I, I don't want everybody else to really know right now. <laughs> Why not, but, man? Why such a secret? <laughs> I'm messing with you, man. I was about to say. <laughs> but nah, man. Um, The next album, I think I'm going to go a little bit more on the darker side of things i think with my music thus far i've been doing a lot of hype mm -hmm. not really digging into the bag i want to dig into i've just been playing around with stuff i think this next album i'm going to be a little bit more in depth but you call it darker i call it darker because that's pretty much my life like i say 80 percent of my life is just dark okay so why just the stuff I go through, man. It's, okay. Is it a translation of stuff or is it really like dark stuff coming at you? Both. Both. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it took get me too many details about that. Man. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's something I can open up about. I could if you want it's, me to. It's on you. Uh, it's I'll, on you, man. I'll, man. I'll, I'll put it like this. Um, when you lose a lot, whether mm -hmm. it's just, you know, just losing life like you so used to taking wins and all this and yeah, stuff like that yeah, then you end yeah. up losing that's one way i look at it mm -hmm. another thing is you know of course my grandma you know that happened last year god and that was soul. god bless <laughs> and that's half the reason like i had to make a transition within myself because mm -hmm. when i lost her dog like if it ain't my mom my sister or my grandma i don't really care so when i lost a piece of that right right that did something to me and it's still doing something to me but I can't say that I'm a little better now because I understand. Before I wasn't, I was in denial. I didn't know what the hell to do. I didn't know what was going on. Like right. I get so yeah. used to getting text messages from my grandma every day, I can't. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of that is the reason <clears throat> that I um started creating a little more, just to keep my mind occupied, just to kind of do what I know she would want me to do. I hear you. Okay. So, okay. From there, um, it's pretty toxic. Was born, and that one I was just more so venting, if anything. And mm -hmm. then um, when All Grown Up came out, that that pretty much solidified. I was pretty much done. Like I, I wanted to stop cold turkey after that. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah. You said before the uh, the New Year start that mm -hmm. uh, at that time, that was your last project, and you weren't even going to do music music this year. Mm -hmm. But uh, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was it was more so, shout out to my boy Ezra, too, but it was more so me and him talking on the mountains and shit. And he was just like, yo, why? Like, why are you stopping? Mm -hmm. Like, everybody messes with your music. Not only that, but you, grandma wouldn't want you to stop this, man. No. And when wouldn't. he said that, Busted out in tears, of course, man. I'm, I'm a very emotional guy. That's another yeah, thing I realized about myself. Do some push-ups or something, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if I, know. if I could. But nah, <laughs> man. Um, So after that, I was just like, you know what? Why am I quitting? Mm -hmm. So from there, I just started making piece by piece. Mm -hmm. And Easy Struggles was born. So I quit music three times in mm -hmm. my life. And it was because of the three marriages I had. Mm -hmm. Um. I guess the old truth or maybe myth or whatever. It doesn't matter what you achieve in life as a man. As soon as you get into a relationship, everything that means something to you now belongs to her. Mm -hmm. Well, I was that, I'm going to say idiot, because I repeated it three times. <laughs> <laughs> One day I just woke up and I'm like, you know what? That's three studios. That's three houses. That's three of everything. You know, how much does it cost to go to college? Mm -hmm. So it was a life lesson. It was like going to school. Like I, I, I didn't know until after the fact. Us as men, 
There's no such thing as being loved unconditionally. Not in this world. The, the most evolved are the most uh, scarred. And that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's why I, I'm here. <laughs> I think it took, like I said off camera, I think it took a lot of hardships to really make me who I am and probably make who you who you are. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you have to go through shit. Right. I mean, like we weren't put on this earth to have everything handed to us. Mm -hmm. Everything we have to go out there and get, you have to get bumped up, scratched up, beat up. <laughs> shot up however you want to look at it you got to go through certain things to either evolve or if you go through things and still end up stuck then that just means okay you're just not meant to be more than what you are i think the reality is we know that's going to happen mm -hmm. but what nobody prepares us for is it comes from the people closest to you that's what got <laughs> me i think and i'm not even going to elaborate on that too much but i think what got me the most is there were certain people in my circle that I really thought cared about me mm -hmm. until I actually sat back and just looked and just right. peeped everything. And it's like I was there for countless numbers of people. Mm -hmm. I was doing the most for countless amounts of people. And then it's like when I get hate in return, right? I never understood it until now. Yeah. And I'm not even going to say why, but I know why. It's pointless. <laughs> but because it's just like I'm gonna just say this at the end of the day people hate what they can't have true so at the end of the day I might have something that they want mm -hmm. and they can't get access to it because I'm I was blessed to be the only person who can get it right it was meant for you and you only and I look at it as like okay well you have something I probably can't have and I can't do nothing about that but hey keep doing you that's how well, I live that's this, lo this wonderful system that we live in Mm -hmm. it's, it's, we are taught self-consciously and consciously to always want what somebody else has. Mm -hmm. Never to cherish what you have or what you can possibly or potentially get yourself. I've been told half of my life that because I was so independent, I was selfish. Because they couldn't read me or they, they couldn't mold me into the person they wanted me to be and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's always somebody that wants somebody. Mm -hmm. But I've never had a complete stranger tell me that. It was always somebody the closest to me that would tell me. Like, oh, you, I think you should do so-and-so. Right. Oh, why you keep doing this? Oh, mm -hmm. you're selfish. Yeah. Huh? They were saying I'm selfish because I don't like going where the in crowd is or I don't like flocking. You know, the talking about relationships still. And, oh, oh you we know, getting on. But, <laughs> hey. I mean, that's where music starts, I think. My mom always taught me never to chase anybody. But mm -hmm. I think along the line, see, I went against what my mom taught me a little bit. Okay. So she was telling me not to chase. You know she's going to hear this, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I already know. She was telling me not to chase. And uh -huh. I would always do the opposite. And then I will end up in messed up situations. Right. Every right. time. Mm -hmm. And the first thing my mom would be like, I told you. Mm -hmm. And I either had to take it on the chin and keep it moving. Or I, I, I basically had to take it on the chin and keep it moving. Yeah. But yeah. there was yeah. one situation yeah. in 2015. This is before I met you. Mm -hmm. And I was so head over heels over a female like it got bad and then when she cheated i'm like what the hell my whole world was done but after that i became hmm. well i wouldn't even say who i became who i am today because mm -hmm. i still ended up going through some crazy shit after that right, right and after that i think the last real relationship or real relationship i was in that in bed and this is what i am now because now i'm to the point where it's like if i'm not Put it like this. If you don't make sense in where I'm at right now, it's not happening. Yeah. I'm not going to chase you. I'm not going to keep doing this. I'm not going to keep doing that. It's either you understand because a lot of females now, they get mad because I record a lot. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, Which makes no sense. You could do something so much worse. I could be out here selling <laughs> drugs, yeah. Yeah. but you but you get mad because I'm recording. And I'm like, this is what keeps me sane. I don't, I don't think it's because of you recording. More I so. think I think because they're not the outlet. I said this before. Um, I quit music. Music never quit me. But really, it didn't. Because if I'm in my car, it's never silent. I have some something playing, Something's some some play. kind of music, something, or I'm listening to the the road. Something has rhythm in it. Life is a rhythm. So to kid myself because I didn't want to face the pains that I put myself into, you know, it's, it's I mean that's that's just a fact. Mm -hmm. You you don't hurt yourself until you put yourself in that position. But when you're hurting bad enough, you pull yourself out of it. Mm -hmm. um, 
I saw a meme the other day and they were saying, uh, why do men stay in bad relationships? And that's a laundry list. That's like a whole nother topic. But it's really the, the, the bad habits that we've learned in this society. That keeps us in them. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. even think I help people anymore. I can't. I, you do. You do. And the, what I mean by that is your music is probably helping people in a way that you probably couldn't even fathom. I don't, yeah. which, which is why I love music so much. <clears throat> you know, I mean, maybe, I mean, is your definition helping somebody, like literally physically helping somebody? I mean, yeah, that's where I was getting at. But mm-hmm. I never thought about the music thing. With me, I, the music's helping me. Mm-hmm. So I don't really pay attention to who else it could be helping. Now, if it is helping somebody else, that's awesome. Right. Like, that's dope. It's hell. It's good. Like I said, it's always good to have those conversations, you know. It opens up a wider variety of things. It does. With me, I don't, like like I was telling you before, I don't want to rap forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I see myself at least mid-30s. Cause okay. Because you got to give this stuff a little bit more time. So I'll say mid-30s. Well, why is it that rappers have an expiration date, but singers don't? <clears throat> you ever thought about that? That's a weird narrative. I don't think rappers have an expiration date. I, I don't either. To me, but society does, and I think it's the gen. I think it's genera- a it's generation. It's because yeah. it's like prime example, and I'm gonna say this every time. Eminem is my favorite rapper. Period. Okay. So I don't get how back then people was going crazy over this man. Mm-hmm. Now, because the man's 50 years old and he's still rapping, it's a problem. But yet, Snoop Dogg, Jay Z, and everybody else can do it. It's weird. So it's like they pick and choose who they want to do that to. That's true. So I'm like, at the end of the day, as long as you still got it in you, who cares? You can be. Well, I can answer that. What's up? Snoop Dogg is doing other things. Oh, yeah. So he's still making money for other people. Mm -hmm. He's still a marketable person. But then when you look at Eminem, Eminem is living life. Chilling. You know, he'll he'll, he'll rhyme here and there. He might go on a talk show, but he's living his life. It's kind of like all of these critics pitting all of these players against Michael Jordan. It's like the the nucleus of racism. It's like, oh, it's so exciting. Like the best player this, the best player that. Well, times change. The only constant is that a great person of their era or a great person of that time is erased for somebody for the sake of somebody else making money. But when you look at the entire league, the basketball league itself, it's actually really embarrassing. When you see a, a a player, like a football player, mm-hmm. they score a touchdown, they start doing a little dance or something like that. I told my dad the other day because he can't stand that. He's like, just play the game, just play the game. Why you got to do all this showboat and stuff? Well, and I told him, I said, because these players get paid to do that. Mm-hmm. Because what happens, a month or so later, they show up on a video game. Yep, and they get, they get endorsed for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So everything that they do that is meant, that is inappropriate, showboating on this stuff money but only certain players can do that and get away with it yeah because it like <laughs> like that thing lebron did when he had did something mm-hmm. i remember he grabbed his crotch and was going like that after he scored mm-hmm. yeah, i see it it's an old clip but he did okay. that mm-hmm. i don't know if they find him or not but it's like only people like him can get away with that right really because right. of how big he is yeah when i talk shit in my music i talk like that's just the rapper in me mm-hmm. but at the end of the day i would love to collab with a lot of people but people are so, oh, I don't want to rap. I don't want to rap with him because he's too lyrical, miracle, spiritual. I want to make bangers. I want to like, bro, let's just make good music. Who cares what comes out of it? You know what I mean? That's why I can do songs with people like Mark Dog or something, for example, because mm-hmm. we don't think about that when we do tracks. It's mm-hmm. just like whatever, like, okay, because me and him are two completely different artists. Yeah. And yep. It happens. Funny that you bring that up because then I, I look at what I do when I try to bring everybody together. Mm-hmm. Or I used to used try to, to bring yeah, everybody yeah. together. Music, especially hip hop, is an expression of self. It's 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 like a it's like your car. It's like Georgia rules. Mm-hmm. You can keep a Gatling gun in your car as long as the car is registered to yourself because it's it's an extension of your home. Big body gun. So when <laughs> artists collaborate with each other. They're looking at it as an opportunity to put something together. They're not looking at it on a bigger spectrum of what it actually can be. So you're always going to have the double edged sword. You're always going to butt heads. All right. So we've been all over the map. I don't know how long this has been. But, uh, <laughs> it's been fun, man. Let's, no let's wrap this up because I'm hungry. <laughs> Me too. I'm, I will say this before we leave. 
since I didn't present it in the beginning. A villain's arc. I'm not going to say what that is. I'm just letting y'all know what that name is. A villain's arc. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> I know what it is. <laughs> Appreciate you. Appreciate you. DJ Warp. DJ Warp.